Good morning, Brian with Grand Roofing, bringing you along on a quick video roof inspection of a leak going on right down in here. We'll get into that here in just a minute. I apologize if you hear some splattering. It's raining pretty decent, hitting my phone here, so I'll try to do us a quick video. Got a call a little bit ago about a leak in this uh, rain we've got going on. It let up a little bit, so we're out and it's in the area in the neighborhood I was in, so I'm working it in for you guys. What is going on? By the way, uh, I think today is uh, Wednesday, April 6th, 2022, so hopefully I'll get this out to you soon, by the way winter jacket because it's just soaking me right now anyway here we go we got the leak going on right here just inside of this room right here just off the corner of the wall about midway right here right at the ceiling and uh, wall where they come together at the top seal plate so we're going to focus our look right down here and up very briefly seeing if we see any obvious damage missing shingles debris anything hit the house a plane crashed out of sky into it, nothing like that so we're going to look through some other things and by the way the point of this video over the years, I've found many leaks because of what we're about to see here. And a lot of guys say, oh, my stuff doesn't leak. I've done this for many years. Vet your contractor, handyman, whoever it is that's going to potentially do your work. Because not only do you want it to look good, you want it to actually be good for many years to come. This type of leak does not happen right after a guy gets done doing the roof. It happens years down the road, 8 to 15 years down the road typically. And it's not a big ceiling dropper. It's a long, slow, prolonged leak that actually causes a lot of damage over time. Rotten decking, seal plates, trusses, insulation, mold, mildew, things like that. So, looking right here, what it actually is, is right here. And it's not just this. We're going to look at that here in a minute. I noticed right off the bat, we got a gutter that's pulling away, ripping down, full of debris. There's no slope on this side or drain down here. Got a pretty good run. It needs gutters cleaned out regularly. It's just regular maintenance. Possibly put gutter guards on. If your run is too far, maybe add a downspout over here. Otherwise, this is going to eventually just rip off, falling down, rotten out things. But because of this, you want to make sure nothing is running back behind right here. You see some water running off of this. Is it getting into the siding area? For the most part, everything looks dry. But the other thing to check for that's relatively easy, and I've done some videos about these low edges and leaks like this, in keyways. You want to just glance in here and see if you see nails in the keyways. So this is the actual leak. Let me know in the comments down below if you disagree with me. That's a definite leaker, and I will show why here in just a second. If you don't believe me, just stay tuned. We're going to try to just stop this from getting worse for them with this right here. If you're in a pinch and you need to spot something to seal a leak, use GSL 4500. It will work in wet conditions. Not perfect. It's best dry. And if you can't find this, in your hometown. I know you're not gonna have it at box stores. Link in the description where you can get on Amazon. Same with this ladder standoff. It protects your gutters and keeps your stuff safe. So, with that being said, let's look at why the leak is here. Do you see anything out of the ordinary there, right in the center of the screen? Let me push down on the shingle and you see something right there? It's full of debris. So what's happening when you have two shingles that come together like this right here, or right here, where the two join together, that is known as a keyway, a book, a stagger pattern, an offset. It's referred to many different things depending on where you live or who you've worked for. You want to make sure you have a consistent pattern, preferably not racked back and forth up the roof. They can go left, they can go right, doesn't matter. There's two big things. You want to make sure the offset is is consistent in a far enough of an offset because water will trickle through these and also out a little bit. The lower the slope, the more it happens. So with that being said, you also, the second most important thing is don't want nails here or within that area. And that is exactly what happened right there. There is a nail that over time has gotten rusted, wallered out, popped up, sunk down, blown through the mat. Either way, it's caused a hole in the shingle now. And all the water gathering on the roof above, running down this way over time, is just dripping in here. As I said before, it's not like a Niagara Fall leak. It's just a little drip. Drip, drip, drip. So not good. Chances are, if this is here, there's probably more. So don't spot this thinking you're golden, you're done. You want to look through the random area and some tips on that. So before I leave, I will spot a little sealer under here. Try to work it in because it is wet. It will work, but it works best dry. You're just going to look for some other ones. Right here, there's another one that's pretty daggone close. You really want to keep those about five inches out from here on either side. So that's why it's important to have a consistent book, consistent stagger pattern, consistent offset, whatever you want to call it. When you throw in these oddballs that are too far, chances are the roofer is consistent with his nail placement in respect to where the shingle lays, the where he's putting them is typically going to be the same unless you're on an end and you're aware of it. But in the field, they get running and they're like, oh, nope, we're good. 
and again it doesn't leak right away so you're gonna look through some other ones uh, it's hard to do while holding the phone and start and uh, trying to focus on this there appears to be another one right there no is there i can't tell yes there is there's another nail right there it's hard to see let me see if i can get you some better ones and like that right there we got going on right here there's a nail raised up that's bad too even though there's no keyway here because on a hot summer day over time this will bust through the mat causing a hole right through it uh, let's look through here there's another one right there so unless there were multiple roofers let me back out a little bit and the roofer right here was probably the lead side building it up i would be aware of this section or possibly down the bottom with another guy takes off <clears throat> i just saw something right there we'll look at so chances are there's probably like this all over we're going to jump up here and look a little more pointing this out right here this little flat divot in the roof right here that will catch water diverting it laterally and then could eventually just in the next keyway right here say it comes in here and there's a hump here run laterally dropping in at the headlap side where those two come together right up here so you don't want bumps like that let's just jump up do a general inspection of this roof since the weather's letting up a little bit you're just going to try to look up under these and see chances are there are going to be more of them these shingles haven't sealed down very well so that's it's off a little bit it's you know it could be a little further away but not not crucial so when they're like in the center i know you're going to find more just keep looking there's another one right there and see how that one's rusting and it's actually kind of partially submerged down below the granule embedded in the mat possibly through the mat over time this will get worse and again the closer to the more dramatic and more bad the leak will be so that's a couple right here this shingle is not wanting to lift up it's sealed down you don't have to split them to verify a tip you can do hopefully i can hold the camera steady on my knee trying to lift up on this you want to verify or look and observe this shingle here since they're bonded if you lift this one and it pulls this up it's probably not shot right there or it is and had broken through the mat and you're lifting them both in this case if i lift here the shingle doesn't move much and it doesn't move at all right here it's telling me there's a nail right there right in this general spot pinning it down so you can kind of tell without even lifting them up splitting the seal strip there's probably one right there so that's a little tip I use when the shingles are really aggressively sealed. There's another one. I don't have to do a whole lot on this roof. I can tell you the nail placement is pretty bad. You can find them a lot easier when the pattern is off or something's raised up like that. There's one right there. It's close and it's actually rusted, broken through. You can see all the debris coming down it. So even though you might seal those, you want to just check up above it. And unfortunately, this reveals some bad indication of it was a bad install. That one's kind of giving a little bit. It's offset. It appears there's a nail right there. Right here. So again, over time, that's going to rust out. It's hard to see with the camera because some debris washed in over the head. The higher up you get, the less runoff gathers, the less runoff you're going to get in on it. Again, this one's not flexing. Tells me there's a nail right under it. Let's just do a general walk over the roof. See something right here? Looks like a three inch round hole saw cut out right over by this pipe. Actually, it's, it looks to be exactly what it is like that HVAC system is fairly new. Like they hole punch or hole saw through the roof to run the pipe through and typically hvac guys they do and they mean good but there's this isn't the worst i've seen i've seen some bad ones where they just screw it right to the roof looks like i tried to seal it the biggest thing i see with this one is the edge right here some guys say absolutely not to nail the flange on the bottom i personally do but i do not do them so low and out to the edge and i'll explain why I try to pull mine in and up a little bit it's up to you if you want to or not just don't do them on the outside i also will say some people say oh you've got to use screws yes that's going to be better because they have threads gripping into the wood and they're not going to pull out but why this is not good 
Water running down this edge over time, getting in right under the flange at the nail, eventually rusting it, wallering it out, dropping it down. Yes, they are galvanized. It's strictly a coating, like an electrolysis process that actually coats it with a galvanized coating. It will over time wear out, it will rust, it will cause a little hole. Throw that off the roof here in a minute, leave it right there. See a shingle right here raised up. There's another nail sticking up, rusting out, raised up right in the channel of water. So again, not good. On this slope here as well. It's going to be a wet day today, I can just tell. It's not going to be fun. This right here indicates a lazy roofer to me. This shingle broke here, and instead of cutting this one down on the gable end here, they simply threw it under and it raises this up. Is it gonna cause a leak? No, not necessarily, but it just looks bad and it screams lazy. But the offset here is worse. There's no nail in it, that's good. Those are some things you wanna be aware of. Looks like somebody scuffed it pretty good and smeared tar on it. Here's a pretty big offset. Let's see if we can reveal a nail. Now. My knees are getting wet. There's another one. It's just kind of lazily stacked over. Got to get ready to wrap this up. We're going long. Chimney flashing in really bad shape. You got really big gaping holes in here. The flashing underneath is not even going up the brick. Probably was the face flashing. They cut, folded it down. This is not extended. So you've got an area easily where water could just, you know, run in. Also, the fact that it's not flashed in two. Got these gaping holes here pulling away. So over time, any rain hitting the brick running down is just channeling right in here. I am not a fan of tar at all, but if you do use fiber tape, it's a doped like fiberglass mesh to help reinforce this and hold this. It'll hold up a little better than that. But nevertheless, it's better to cut into the brick and countersink aluminum flashing, making sure you've got extensions and everything wrapped. Looking at the chimney, it's not in the best of shape. It looks like it's not being used. There was an old B-vent flue pipe run through here. If you're gonna go through the trouble of doing this, let alone that's not good, you probably should have, or consider if you're thinking of doing this, just remove the brick down below the roof line when you retrofit to it, run that out through with a B-vent flue pipe collar, flange, flashing and all, eliminating all this. It's not a big chimney, it'd be easy to knock down a couple feet below the roof line into the attic. Gutter back here is pretty full too, should be cleaned out. It's in much better shape than the front one. I gotta wrap this up, we're going long. As I said before, you don't want somebody that's just going to put shingles on that look good. You want them to last. You wanna make sure, unfortunately, it's starting to let up a little bit. The, an issue like this, this type of leak is not gonna develop right away. So the guys that say, oh, my stuff's never leaked, it's never been a problem, I've roofed many years, never been a problem. It doesn't happen right off the bat. It's gonna take some time. It's gonna take some years before you know it. So do your due diligence, vet your contractor, make sure they have a good track record, make sure they're gonna be in business if there's a problem, they'll come back to it. Make sure they do come back to it if there's a problem. I hear a lot of times we're just quit responding. And the rain's coming back again. As I said before, if you want to, that ladder standoff, I'll leave a link down below and the caulking, the GSL 4500 brand. Side note on that, it will work when it's wet, but you're gonna to have to kind of mush it into the surface a little bit. Silicone, strictly silicone, will not bond when it's wet, so stay away from that, it'll make a mess. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing if you haven't, so you, miss, or so you don't miss the next video when it comes out. Unscripted, unedited, my phone's dripping wet, time to go, talk to y'all later. Until next time, be safe, we'll see you then.